Good evening. Tonight in this country, three separate nuclear facilities are in danger, two of them because of floodwaters, one of them because of fire. At the Los Alamos National Lab in New Mexico, there's now a mandatory evacuation of the city in effect. 12,000 people on the move because of the fire burning less than a mile away from the facility, which, as you may know, has always been shrouded in secrecy. And the flooding in the Upper Plains, which has shattered records dating back to the 1800s, has surrounded now a nuclear pr plant in Nebraska and threatens another. All of this while the suffering and the high water remain in Minot, North Dakota. We have all these fronts covered tonight. We want to begin with this situation in Los Alamos. NBC's Janet Shamlian is there tonight to start us off. Janet, good evening. Hi, Brian. This has grown much more serious just within the last few hours as the flames are now within striking distance of this town and the winds have picked up considerably. Out on the road, cars are backed up for miles trying to get out of here as those evacuations are now mandatory for everyone. The fast-moving fire swelled overnight, burning 68 square miles and destroying at least 30 structures. Late today, a mandatory evacuation was ordered, and traffic was bumper to bumper as people tried to get out of town. Los Alamos Laboratory shut down. Officials insist all hazardous and radioactive materials are protected and secure from the wildfires for now. I will not say it is not going to go in the lab. We're doing our best to keep it off the laboratory. But a worst-case scenario loomed in the mind of residents, scrambling to evacuate. Kind of make you nervous with all this nuclear stuff around. It's a little close for comfort. <laughs> I'd say that for sure. Los Alamos is famous as home to the Manhattan Project, where scientists developed the first atomic bomb. Today, the massive complex includes 2,000 buildings spread out over 36 square miles. Obviously, our priority is to protect the national asset here, uh, protect the facility, but also we're concerned about the welfare of our 10,000-plus employees. The lab will be closed once again tomorrow. Right now, one of the fires is on its southwestern border. Brian? All right, Janet Shamley, I'm keeping an eye on things. Two other nuclear facilities in the news tonight. But in the Northern Plains, the problem, the threat to the plants comes from water and not fire. It's important to remember, first of all, there are over 100 active nuclear facilities in the United States. These two plants are under threat because of flooding along the Missouri River. Water broke through a barrier at Fort Calhoun Nuclear Power Plant near Omaha. Then downriver, waters are also rising around the Cooper Station plant. NBC's Mike Taibbi is in Fort Calhoun, Nebraska tonight. Mike, good evening. Good evening, Brian. In fact, this is the biggest threat just from flooding that a nuclear power plant in this country has ever faced. And in fact, you should say it's two plants, this one at Fort Calhoun, which were shut down back in April for refueling, and the one at Cooper Station about 80 miles south of here near the town of Brownville. But federal and local authorities agree that neither plant is in immediate danger. The way it's laid out there looks like it's going to be challenging. The Fort Calhoun nuclear plant is now virtually an island. Early Sunday morning, an aqua berm, sort of a huge inner tube filled with water that had been built to help shield the facility from the rising Missouri River, collapsed and failed. But the berm was only a secondary safety net. Flood waters would have to rise an unlikely eight feet higher for key buildings to be threatened. And if that happens, additional emergency measures are in place. Despite some of these challenges, fundamentally, uh, we don't believe that the plant is, is posing a, an, a, any immediate threat to public health and safety. Eighty miles downriver, the Cooper nuclear station continues to operate at full capacity. NRC officials toured this facility yesterday and say it's safe, though the floodwaters only began to recede after coming within inches of the level that would have required a plant shutdown. But most of the concerns have been about Fort Calhoun, which the NRC cited last year as failing to maintain procedures for combating a significant flood. So before this flood, additional watertight doors and barriers were installed on all buildings, and more pumps and sandbagging equipment were positioned on site. This is not business as usual. Um, you don't build these aqua berms uh, in order to have them destroyed. That said, I think the the prospects of a significant release of radiation into the environment are still very slim. The reactor, one of the country's smallest, is now in what's called safe cold shutdown mode. 
and this plant might have to stay in shutdown mode for weeks and maybe even months until the floodwaters recede. Nearly a million people live within 50 miles of this plant, nearly half of those in the city of Omaha, 20 miles south of here. So far, there have been no evacuations. Brian? Mike Taibbi tonight from Fort Calhoun in Nebraska. Mike. Hey, what's up guys? Joey V here. Uh, I wanted to show you something uh, on the uh, Emergency and Disaster Information Service map here. <clears throat> We're going to look down into the eastern United States. And we click and we have uh, June 28th, 2011. We have a nuclear event in the state of New Jersey at Lower Alloways Creek Township at Salem Nuclear Power Plant. So we will click details and see what's going on here. Uh, a lot of unknowns, uh, or sorry, unknowns right now. Um, cause of the event unknown. And if I click event description, it says the Salem 2 nuclear power plant in southern New Jersey is shut down because of a problem with a reactor coolant pump. Spokes, uh, spokesman Joe Delmar tells today's Sunbeam of Salem that the Salem 2 reactor went offline automatically at 6 p.m. Sunday. Delmar says an auxiliary pump automatically kicked in when the main pump shut down. He says the cause is under investigation. Salem 2 is one of three reactors operated at the artificial island generating site in Lower Alloways Creek Township on the Delaware River. The Salem 1 and Hope Creek reactors continue to operate at full power. The three plants provide enough electricity to power 3 million homes. Japan's newly appointed minister in charge of the nuclear disaster says he hopes to reduce the size of the evacuation zone around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant by mid-July. Goshi Hosono said on Tuesday, work to bring the power plant under control has been making gradual progress. TEPCO has set a target of July 17th for completing the first stage of its plan to bring the facility under control. We hope that in just over half a month's time, by July the 17th, a stable system will be in place at the plant for cooling the reactors. If it can be confirmed that there is no longer a risk of hydrogen explosion, some of the evacuees will probably be able to return to their homes. You guys wonder why I use the word fuck, and you wonder why I go off. You wonder why I get so fucking impassioned. Look what's going on. Nobody will address this. The fucking the regulatory fucking agencies, the fucking international ones, our ones here in the United States, the NRC, NCR, fuck whatever these loser lying motherfuckers are. At the cripple of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, the utility has begun building a giant polyester shield over the damaged number one reactor to prevent further radiation leaks into the atmosphere. The large crane in Japan has been brought to the site for the reconstruction. It has a 140 meter long arm that can lift up to 750 tons. The crane will be used to install the fabric cover around the reactor. The Tokyo Electric Power Company says that when the shield is installed, the entire structure will be about 54 meters high. Meanwhile, off-site at Onohama Port, about 50 kilometers from the nuclear plant, the utility is pre-assembling 62, 62 steel components that will be joined to create a rigid frame. The frame will support one millimeter thick polyester fiber panels. The components will start arriving at the plant in July. Work to assemble them will be done by the crane. TEPCO hopes to complete the cover by late September. Fucking into the fucking ocean. We got the Nebraska fucking nightmare fucking going on right now. Do you know they had a spent fucking fuel rod fucking pond? It didn't cool down fucking the other day. This is a fucking catastrophe. This is really, I go up on my science fiction economic. This is turning into fucking science fiction world. This is fucking creepy, crazy fucking shit. I don't fucking believe it. I don't fucking believe it. It just goes on and on and on. Tokyo Electric Power Company resumed the operation to cool damaged reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant on Tuesday, but it says it found minor water leaks in a newly installed cooling system. TEPCO said it traced the leak to a joint connecting plastic hoses near a pump injecting water. It did not check the possibility of a water leak before starting the system on Monday. 
TEPCO's circulating injection cooling operation is designed to decontaminate radioactive wastewater in the reactor and turbine buildings and then use the treated water to cool the reactors. It says 14 tons of recycled water and 2 tons of fresh water have been injected into the reactors per hour. The utility says it will continue to inject water while watching out for more leaks. TEPCO says that radioactive strontium has been detected for the first time on the seabed near Fukushima Daiichi. The radioactive material can accumulate in the bones if inhaled, which can cause cancer. The company conducted a survey earlier this month at two locations that were some 20 kilometers north and south of the plant. TEPCO says it found strontium 89 and 90 in the seabed soil. Up to 44 becquerels per kilogram of strontium-90 were detected, which has a half-life of 29 years. The substances had been detected before in soil on land and in seawater following the nuclear accident in March. In separate surveys, Japan's fishery ministry did not find radioactive strontium in fish and seafood samples taken off the coast near the plant. It fucking Japan. What the fuck is the matter with everybody? Where the fuck? And the media, you don't think they got a fucking huge blame? Oh, yeah. Yeah, granted, we're a bunch of contemporized fucking masses here in the United States that are dumber than fucking dirt. Professor Ikeda has invented the first steaks based on proteins from human excrement. Sewage mud is rich in protein because it is alive with bacteria. These bacteria are harmless because they are killed by heat during the manufacturing process. The red color is obtained by using food coloring. The artificial steak, according to initial tests, even tastes like beef. In fact, to refine the flavor, Professor Ikeda adds soy protein. It's 63% protein, 25% carbohydrates, 3% lipids, and 9% minerals to make one turd burger. まずこちらの過程で、タンパク質を取り出して、最後に反応補充剤を加えて、反応装置、エクスクローダーにかけて、人工肉を作っています。Professor Ikeda believes the main problem is the psychological barrier.確かに人間が出したものだということに対してですね。だからそこそこそれを食べたいという人は多分あんまりいないんじゃないかなというふうに思っています。その人工肉を作るための According to Professor Akida, the turd burger has an obvious advantage other than completing the food chain. Bon appetit!